Objection handling is both my least favorite and most favorite part of the sales process. The reason it is my least favorite is because if you only focus on how to overcome objections, you're going to have a hard time. You're going to struggle because really the true work in objection handling comes from what happened prior to you getting that objection. I personally believe that over half of objections can be avoided simply by the way that you went through the sales process, because you're by definition overcoming a whole lot of objections simply by putting in the work ahead of time. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to avoid all objections forever. In fact, you're dealing again with a population of people that have been conditioned for 50 years to say, I want to think about it. They've been conditioned for 50 years to say, I want to talk to someone. They've been conditioned for 50 years to say, I want to check my budget, right? So we're going to get into all of that today and more on part six of managing the sales process. My name is Dana Neeson. If you're just now finding this channel, I run a telesales team for Tailored Legacy across 17 states. We sell final expense insurance over the phone with one carrier, and my job is to help you have more elevated and stronger sales conversations. Okay, so part six is going to be a little bit different today. Instead of me just talking to you about objection handling, what I'm going to do is share a sales training that I had with some of my new agents a week or so ago, and it was all about objection handling. We went over the money objection and we went over the I want to talk to someone objection, but I hope you enjoy the sales training for objection handling. Okay. So last night we talked about objection handling of uh, affordability, cost, money, and we talked about, I want to talk to someone about this decision before I make the decision. And uh, we also talked, uh, someone else brought a, well, I'm afraid of getting scammed objection. And we handled that same objection the way that we handle a money objection. So um, Rich, Kendall, since you guys were on last night's training, you're here again. That shows me that you're trying to get the most out of it. You want to learn. You want to be better. So do you want me to call on one of you or do you want to want to participate, volunteer first? Kendall? Okay. So you're on mute. How about that? So you get a, you get a money objection. What do you say? Well, that's not a problem. Um, what is, uh, is that the only thing holding you back uh, now, or is there something else that uh, we need to address? Okay, I'm going to pause you. Rich, you get a money objection. Do you remember what we said? I'm only calling on Kendall and Rich right now. They yes, were on the training. Check my notes. Um, I think it was like, you know, that's not a problem, but outside of money, was there any other concerns that, um, you know, that's preventing you from moving forward? Interesting. So both you and Kendall just said the same thing, which is not what we were covering last night, which is fine, right? Repetition and rinse and repeat, hearing it a million times, saying it a million times will ultimately just get it to click. Um, Christian, did you want to try? Or are you distracted with whatever you're doing in the background. It's going to be too difficult. Okay, no worries. All right, so Lisa, I saw your hand up. So you get a money objection. What do you say? You're on mute. Lisa, you're on mute. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Um, I would be like, okay, uh, that's not a problem. Um, and that's not uncommon. I get that quite a bit. However, uh, we do have policies that start as low as $15 a month. I mean, if we can get something that fits within your budget um, and that you're really comfortable with, because I wouldn't want to get you into a policy that you couldn't afford because it'll just terminate and then it won't make sense for you to get the policy in the first place. Okay, pause. So, so I apologize if I was unclear, my fault. We're talking about objections at the end of the call, right? So you've already oh. given quotes. 
Um, I'm sorry. That was my fault. Um, oh, no worries. Oh, okay. Okay. Object I'm sorry. Obje and, uh, and objection at the end of the call. They say, well, I'm sorry. I just can't afford it. Hmm, at the end of the call. I don't know. Let me stop there. Okay, so the end of all of what I'm about to give to you, unless someone else wants to participate, you already have it in front of you. So we should never be on a training when you aren't saying the using the tools and the resources that you already have, Matt. You're on mute. You're on mute. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, that's not a problem. Um, now, oh, you know what? I just had it in my head a second ago. So let me let me try this. So that's not a problem. But if if this was affordable, is this something that you would even want to have? Good, good. Okay. So <clears throat> in your delivery, obviously, it needs to be a little bit smoother, not right. like stumbling. And you could you could use what you just said, which if this was more affordable, the one that I kind of my go to because I just think it's simpler. It's a little bit easier. It would be, you know, Matt, I, I completely understand. Um, and first of all, just to kind of nip this in the butt, Lisa, I would, I personally would never say I, I get that all the time. People tell me things are too expensive all the time because that's mm -hmm. going to plant the seed that it's too expensive for everyone. No one can afford it. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> in this case, we're talking about the end. It would be, I understand Matt. that that makes sense. I mean, money aside, is this even something you would want to have? Okay, what comes after that? They say yes. What comes after that? Anybody can oh, participate at this point. Got me stumped a little bit. Okay. Well, I, I would probably say, well, can make can I make a suggestion then? Not yet. No, no. you've got a lot more oh. before you Okay, then I, I'm gonna hold on let's hold on i don't want to speak over each other i apologize so dan yeah. go ahead sorry um why do you feel like it would help you though right now i want you to say it in a way that sounds genuine and too, too loud a little softer so i'm going to say it then you're going to say it. okay so and why exactly do you feel it would help you and your family the most i like it you definitely have a unique voice. Sorry. <laughs> Is Go that ahead. bad or good? No, it's fine. It's unique. So you just okay. have to work on purposely sounding a little softer and more curious, right? It has to come okay. from a place of curiosity, of, of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When I say it, I'll, I'll say Subtleness. Go ahead. Subtle. Go ahead, Dan. Say it again. Oh. <laughs> So Dana, why do you think? Wait, I'm sorry. That's okay. This Completely even understand. Yes. I, yes, I'd like to have it. Why do you think that though? And why do you feel it would help you and your family the most? That's okay. Okay. So, and why do you feel it would help you and your family the most? So now your customer is going to say, well, it'll give my family the money they need to bury me now. We spoke about this last night. If that is the only thing that comes out of your customer's mouth, that is a big red flag. Why is that a big red flag? No one? If they only say, well, it'll give my kids the money they need to bury me. It's so not, not emotional, maybe. No. If that is the only thing they say, why is that a huge red flag? Because they're not seeing the value and everything else that comes with the policy. It's just about the money, which any, any company can offer that. Correct. That is correct. Kyle is correct. So if all they say is the money then you have not done your job in making them see the value in the immediate payout and seeing the value of an advocacy program and seeing the value of
being an advocate for their family so they don't have to worry about getting overcharged or taken advantage of. Those things should also be a part of the reason why they think it would help their family. Okay, that's, that is something that if you use these techniques and that is all they say, you know that you need work in that section and you better get on a coaching call with me. Okay, so let's pretend we did everything right. You say, and why, why exactly do you feel like it would help your family the most, you and your family the most? Well, not only would it give them the money they need to bury me, but it sounds like they're going to get it really quick. And, you know, they're also not going to, I won't have to worry about them being overcharged or taken advantage of. I really like that too. Okay. What comes next? Mm -hmm. If they acknowledge that much, at yeah, least. That's what they that say. Now it's your turn to speak. So what do you say now? Okay. Now you go into, can I make a suggestion? Not yet. Almost. We have to practice just, some active listening here. I would just say, perfect. You got it. That's exactly um, a, a good enough reason to want this policy. After somebody tells you why they feel it would help them. Now, before I give you the answer of what comes next, let's pretend they did just say, well, it'll give the money to my sons that they need to bury me. You need to say, okay, so in addition to the money though, did you like the fact that they would be getting an immediate payout? Was that also important to you? Yeah, I like that. Okay. And, um, depending on how the conversation is going, you can ask why, or you can ask why or not ask why it kind of, you really got to feel it out. Well, what about the fact that they'll also be an advocate for your kids to make sure that any money we can save from your policy stays with them? Did you like that as well? Right. Do you see how I'm not telling them how I feel about it? I'm asking them how they feel, but I'm putting it back on the forefront of the benefits to remind them if I did a poor job there and it didn't stick. Yes, I like that too. And just so we're on the same page, because I know there's a, you know, this is a lot, it's a heavy topic. It's not things we like to talk about. Why do you like the immediate payout and, and the advocacy program? Why do you think that would help your kids, right? You've got to get them to say it. They have to commit to it. Okay. So once we get that, now we do active listening. Okay. So if I'm understanding you correctly, Matt, it sounds like in addition to just your kids getting the money, so they don't have to come out of pocket. You also see the benefit of them getting paid right away, you know, not having to wait, not having to assign a policy and making sure they're not overcharged or even taken advantage of for the cost of everything. Is that right? I'm going to restate it. I'm going to double say it. Okay. Yes, I do like that. Now, what do we say? It's been said two times. Now we can say it. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Now we have permission to make a suggestion because we've done a full loop. We've pushed the money aside and we're back to why they want it. Okay. Yes, you can make a suggestion. Okay. Have you possibly considered reducing the amount of coverage that we're talking about today to a payment that maybe feels a little bit more comfortable for you right now, that will allow us to at least put something in place, get everything sent over to you by email. I mean, I'm sure you're going to want to talk to your kids about this. So you have something for them to look at. And if you go back to your budget and you decide there is a little bit of extra room, you can always call me back and we can add a little bit more. Would that be a reasonable solution for you at this point? Okay, guys. So the same exact objection technique works for someone who says, I don't want to be scammed. It is the same exact thing. Okay, let's just put that for aside, aside for a second. I understand your concern. That makes sense. We're doing this over the phone. You don't even know who you can trust, right? I'm going to validate that. Is this even something you would want to have? Why do you feel like it would help your family the most? So if I'm understanding you correctly, it would, you feel it would help them because of X, Y, and Z. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Can I maybe make a suggestion? 
Now your suggestion is different here because it's not a price objection, it's a scam objection, right? Mm -hmm. How do you think you can overcome your fear of getting scammed so that you can put this in place to protect their kid, to protect your kids so they can have the money to bury you, so they can have the immediate payout, so they can have all the things that you said you wanted. How do you think you can overcome that? Let them answer, right? Because they have to have a little reality check here. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if we can't figure out a way together for you to get out of your own way and get this protection for your kids, you're going to die with nothing. And then what? Go ahead. Can I ask you a question about uh, clients being concerned about being scammed? Mm -hmm. Would you ever make a recommendation that, hey, how about this? And I understand what you're saying about trying to get them overcome the fear of being scammed. But what? How about this? How about uh, to if it'll make you feel more comfortable? I'll give you my agent number, and you can just call into the Department of Texas and check me out to see that I am who I say that I am. And then we connect back in maybe five minutes. That way, you know that I'm here to sell you some insurance, not to scam you. So. You know? I personally don't like that one just because, don't like it. because the, our clients, that's going to be an overwhelming thing for them to do. Okay. Oh, the older, you talking you know, about the older generation. Like now I have to go online and find yeah. the site and look you up. And just because yeah. of your name, how do I know that's really you? You could be giving me someone else's number, right? So I put, there's too many loopholes there that gotcha. isn't really boxing them down. Now, food for thought for you guys, when I... Um, at get to the health questions and, um, and right before I'm about to give them some options, kind of right before I give them some pricing and I'm, and I'm putting their phone number in the applicant section, I'll kind of pause there and say, Hey, by the way, is this phone number that I'm putting in here? Is this your cell phone number? Is it okay if I send you a text message right now? It has my business card on it and it's going to come from my personal cell phone. So you'll have my agent number, you'll have the 800 number, and you'll have my direct contact number. So you can get a hold of me anytime. I'm just, just want to pause there and quickly send that to you. Okay, cool. Can you make sure that you got it? Great. Okay. Let's move on. So I'm kind of overcoming the credibility objection at that point. I don't ever get scam objections because mm -hmm. I do all of the work to get them to trust me in the beginning, right? So part yeah. of what I hate about objection handling is that you cannot overcome objections that you created in the first place, right? And over 50% of objections are caused by you. You didn't create enough trust. You didn't position yourself as the expert. You didn't ask the right questions. You weren't on the same page. You did not let your customer talk enough. You interrupted them, right? All of these things are going to cause them to not view you as the person who they feel is going to get them the best results. You can eliminate 80% of your objections just by doing all the work. And then when you do get objections, which you will, at that point, they're just concerns. They're just people who have been conditioned for the last 50 years to say, I want to think about it. They're just people for the last... 50 years who have always said, I want to pray about it. They just say, I can't afford it. They just, they just say it because that's just what they say. And they've never had anybody challenge them to do something different because everybody just wants to push for the approval, ignore the concern mm -hmm. and pretend like it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Right. We cannot be that way or we'll we're, we're just going to keep wanting to bounce around from insurance company to insurance company thinking that it's the leads. Right. It's not. We just have to have a stronger, more sophisticated way of connecting with people and making them want to do business with us. It's in it. I say it's as simple as that, but it's not that simple. It really takes a lot of effort, a lot of thought. We listened to a call yesterday, last night, and 
what, for those of you, there were three of you on the call last night, what was the number one lesson you learned from the discovery part of that call? Kendall, Rich, or Christian? I think Christian left. So Kendall or Rich? I know one thing would be to find out exactly why they're on the phone call with you. And another was if they do have a large policy, why do they feel like that policy is not enough? Like, why are they pursuing, you know, more coverage if they have a hundred thousand plus? Kendall, did you learn anything else or was that pretty much summing it up? Well, that was a good one. But then the person, why did they want, why do you feel like that $170,000 policy is not enough for your family? What do you, what do you need from this, from our policy? What are you looking for? Take right. care of your family. It's not necessarily from our policy because we're just in discovery right now, right? So they know nothing about what we do. So it would just be why. So the call last night, um, what, what we listened to, it was someone who um, had already talked to agents previously, was not happy with what he was quoted because he's on blood thinners. So obviously he's qualifies for a lot less and it's a lot more expensive we don't know what he was quoted or any of that based on the call, but we do know that he has a $170,000 policy that he doesn't make any more payments on because there was a disability clause that basically said that if you can show that you're disabled, your premium payments are waived for the rest of your life. Wow. So I'm very curious, why do we need more coverage if we already have 170,000, yet he's been talking to all these other people, not happy with what he's looking for, but what the agent did that we were listening to, he just kind of didn't address that and just said, oh, you want five or 10,000 of coverage? Great. Let's go ahead and move forward. And when you guys aren't on the same page with your customer, you're going, you're 1 million percent going to get objections at the end that will be impossible to overcome because you have no idea why they're looking for more. You don't know the problems. Right. If you don't understand the problems behind the wants, you're just going to be hoping and praying that something you say is going to magically make them just make them say yes. And that does not work. Right. So that's why I focus on the one on one coaching calls. We say in discovery for months until you've got it, because there is always things that you're going to miss. This script, which is based off of any PQ, which is neuro emotional persuasion questioning. It is a very advanced sales technique, and it only works if you understand the concepts of what we're trying to teach. It is not the script. The script by itself will not sell it. It is yeah. how it is delivered. It is how you are listening. And if you're probing to understand, your questions have to be relevant to your customer situation so they actually feel like you care. Has anyone seen yeah. the coffee maker example on Instagram? Just by show of hands. One person, Rich, Matt. Are you talking about the coffee maker? What? Yeah, I, a post I had on Instagram about buying a coffee maker. You did not see that? Anyone else? Oh. Okay. So sorry, Matt, Rich, you're going to have to hear me through this again, but I don't think it ever hurts. So you're going into a store to buy a coffee maker, and the sales rep comes up to you and says, how can I help you? You say, I'm in the market for a new coffee maker. And the sales rep says, okay, well, you've come to the right place because we are the number one store in coffee maker sales. We have every make and model to choose from. Um, if we don't have it here, we can have it shipped to your home overnight. So give me an idea like what your budget is. What are you looking to spend on a coffee maker? Well, without really understanding what goes into the price of a coffee maker, I'm just gonna say, I don't know, maybe $200. Okay, cool. Let me take you to the section of our coffee makers that are about $200 in price range. It'll narrow it down from maybe about 100 to 20. And I'll just be over here at the counter and you let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Well, now I'm looking at 20 coffee makers and I still have literally no idea which one to buy. So I'm going to walk out of that store and need to think about it. Okay. So scenario two, I walk in, the same sales rep asks me if he can help. I say, I'm looking for a coffee maker. And he says, okay, great. Well, 
there's obviously a lot to choose from here. So I, I probably should just get a better understanding of what's important to you when it comes to drinking coffee. Can I ask how long you've been searching for one? Um, yeah, probably about a couple of weeks. Okay. What happened to your other one? Or did you even have one? Yeah, I, I had one for a long time and it broke and I'm looking to maybe upgrade that to something better. Um, okay. And how do you mean? Well, I had a Keurig with the pods and I really kind of want to get away from that. I want to be more energy for, or globally efficient. And I'd like to have something that brews. Oh, okay. And um, what have you found? I really haven't found much. I don't understand it. There's a lot to choose from and I'm just very confused. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. So um, have you ever um, had a coffee maker before that grinds the beans itself, like the whole beans? Would you like the process of grinding whole beans or would you like to just put the coffee grounds in it? Oh, it sounds like a lot of work to grind my own beans. I would just like ground. Okay. And would you like a coffee maker that just brews like one cup at a time or would you like it to brew a whole pot? Well, I don't really drink a whole pot of coffee a day. So one cup would probably be better. Okay. And talk to me about the space where this coffee maker will go. Will it be in a residential space or maybe an office space where there's a lot of traffic? No, just at my home and my counter is really small. I live in an apartment. Got it. Okay. So if I'm understanding you correctly so far, um, you had a Keurig, you're looking to kind of upgrade to something that um, will give you more of a fresh coffee. You want something that's a single cup fresh grounds. Um, let me ask you another question. Do you want something that will steam milk with it? Or do you like to drink your coffee black? Okay. Look, I'm just going to stop there because this person could know nothing about coffee makers. I know nothing about coffee makers, but just because I'm asking the right questions, I am automatically going to think that this person is about to make a recommendation to me based on what my needs are. Exactly. Okay, so that is the point of NEPQ. If your questions are just scripted and you're not listening to the customer, then they will get annoyed with you, right? So there That's are some right. questions on the script that you may not need to ask because yeah, they've sure. already told you in the beginning, mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. right? So if yeah. you don't listen and mm -hmm. you just ask the question that you already know the answer to, they're going to get mad at you. Back to the beginning of this call when we went over objection handling, I want to make sure that everybody understands that if you haven't done everything right in the beginning, we're not covering the beginning today, the objections, they won't work because you didn't have enough teeth. There weren't enough legs. There was not enough stuff for you to grasp onto that allows you to hold them accountable at the end. So um. Before we move on to the partner kid objection, without thinking, without missing a beat, this sounds really good, but I don't think I can afford it. What do we say? Okay, that's not a problem. Where are we at? In discovery or at the yeah, end? Or objection handling. Anyone who wants to go, maybe just, just raise a virtual hand. Just go, just go right into, yeah. hey, that's not a problem. You know, I totally understand. Um, I guess if you did have the money, do you feel like this is something that would work for you? Some, some yes, yeah, something to that effect, Jamal. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah, that's not a problem. Tell me if it is more affordable, is this something you want to have? Exactly. Just, just like that. Put the money aside. Money aside. Is this even something you would want to have, right? You have to, you have to put the objection away. You have to put it in a box and you have to put it in the closet and you just have to have a heart to heart with them. Is this even something you want, right? Because if they don't want it, then, then you don't have, then you have nothing. If they say, no, I actually don't want it. Well, then you're not going to go through the rest of it. You're going to say, okay, well, I'm sorry. I wasn't able to help you, right? They have to want it, <laughs> you know, and if they, if they've allowed you to take them through the entire thing and then they don't want it, then that is a call we need to listen to. Right. For sure. So put the objection aside, right? I understand. Let's put the money aside for a second. 
is this even something you want to have? And how, why do you think it would benefit you and your family the most? Okay, you got to take them through the full cycle. Does anybody want to role play that with me before we move on to the spouse or kid objection? Yeah, can we? Can you run through that whole the whole scenario one more time again, uh, just for repetition? So they they say, yeah, we'll yeah, it's, it's something I. I'm sorry. But yeah, so a money money aside, um, they say no, it's it's just the money right now, and say money aside, um, no, I understand money aside. Is this something that you would want to have? Yeah, they, I want to have it. Okay, and. So I understand then why why do you feel like why do you feel like you you would though? Why be more specific? Why do you feel like it would help you and your family the most? Okay. Why why do you feel like it would help? Should I say why or how? Or either one. Uh how, how do you feel this would um help your family the most? Well, um, of course it's gonna give them the money, you know, to pay for my funeral, but uh I actually really did like how they would get the money like right away and that you guys can get the cremation costs down to like a thousand dollars. Okay. And that, that, that was important to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I make a suggestion? Before you make a suggestion, you need to recap what I just said. So I, okay. Know okay. So just, like. just, just so I understand, Dana, so what I'm, what I'm hearing you saying is uh, you want to make sure that your family has enough money to pay the funeral and have somebody there to hold their hand during that time um, so they can you know, pro properly grieve. Is that right? You didn't say anything about the immediate payout. Got to say all of it about the media because I wasn't listening I was writing it down so about and and you like and the, having the immediate payout would help them when the time does come so they're able to to properly um grieve is that am I hearing you right yeah yeah that's all right okay can I make a suggestion sure okay um would you be open to um, I guess the policy starting at maybe a little bit lower monthly payment. And then once you get the policy, if you feel like you still have a little bit extra, we can always add more. Um, what do you suggest? Well, right now we're, you're looking at that um, $75 a month payment for $10,000. What if we uh, brought that down to a $50 uh, to make it a little bit easier? for you to make those monthly payments. And then if you feel like you're able to add, feel like you're able to add some more down the road that would, you know, we can go ahead and, you know, talk about that then. Would, what would that drop my coverage down to you though? Uh, about, looks like right around 7,000. So another thing to make that stronger, right? Cause you want to justify why you're reducing it, not just in the payment, because now I'm feeling it as the customer because 7,000 will be plenty to not just take care of the cremation, but to make sure they even have something left over for unexpected expenses, or if they want to have a service or a celebration of life, to be honest, you probably don't even need more than five, but I know it was important to you to have that extra buffer, right? I would still justify it based on what you learned about what's important to them in discovery, right? bring that back in because they have to almost like picture it in their mind. This is part of storytelling. The more specific you can get with everything you do in the form of description, like when you're reading a book, right? When we're reading books, we can almost picture the story in our mind because of how descriptive the book is, right? All we have is our voice. So we're almost like an audiobook. We have to be as descriptive as possible so they can really picture what we're saying in their minds. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So think about that when you're trying to justify something, I would be as descriptive as a book. Okay. Um, but yes, you're on the right track with the funnel 
of where we need to take them. Because if they've already said they want it and they've told you why they want it, and it's just the price that's holding them back, and now you can justify that they can still get everything they want with a lower cost, it's so hard for them to, to still say no, unless there's something they're not telling you, right? Um, and sometimes they just need you to say, you can always call me back and we can get more, right? A lot of people think it's a one shot deal. Once they choose it, that's it. They're done. They can't get any, any more, right? A lot of people will say, oh, I can. I didn't know I could, right? So even stating some of the things that are obvious to you that are not obvious to your customers will help them justify. And one thing that I always like to say um, when someone is on the fence about making a decision when they don't have any coverage in place um, and they've already told me why they want it and why they think it would help them, and I'm trying to justify them reducing the coverage. You know, it's like this virtual hand holding where we say things like, at the end of the day, it is my job to put you and your family in a better position than you were when we got on the phone together. And I would be doing your family a huge disservice if you left with still no coverage. Right. And I can't, and I don't feel right about that. So what do we have to do to put your family in a better position today? Right. But I've already gone through the loop. I do not give up. I will stay in objection handling for 20 minutes. If I have to don't just stop at one. Right. That's the huge difference. But if you hear the way that I'm saying it, my tone is super low. I am my, the, my pace is soft. I'm not over talking. Right. I'm making it very clear. I'm there. There's there. There is no reason for them to say no to me unless they're they ha, unless I I failed and I didn't uncover something. Right. Then I know I'm going to go back and listen to that call. Where did I? What did I miss? What did I miss? Because it's always something that we missed. Okay. Anyone else want to role play that before we do the partner objection? No. Everyone feel like they have a much better understanding of that objection now? This is will be this is recorded. We've recorded it. So it'll be on the agent resource page for you to re-listen to and re-watch. But I think it's really, really important that you don't just understand the words on the paper, but you understand the concept. Because if you understand the concept of what we're trying to do, it will make it so much easier to get off script and just be a human, right? And just help your customer get over their fears, right? That's what we're trying to do. Did you have a question, Jamal? No, okay. We only have like nine minutes left to cover this spouse. So we'll start it. Um, I'll go over the concept of it. Um, <clears throat> but this is definitely a three, four, five step objection and you cannot rush it. And if you skip steps, it doesn't work, right? You have to be very specific and slow. And this is a very sensitive thing when someone wants to talk to someone. Now <clears throat> it's easier to overcome the kids one than it is the spouse one. It just is. Um, but it's not impossible, right? Because if someone really wants something, if I really want something and I, you know, and I, if I actually, let me do it the other way. If I really don't want something, if I'm unsure, I'm going to use my husband as an excuse. I just will. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But if I really, really want it, if I really feel to my core, it's something that will benefit my family. I'm not going to talk to my husband about it. I'm going to tell him what I did when I'm done. Mm -hmm. right? But so you just, you have to, you have to know that. Think about purchases that you've done, even stupid purchases. Do you go to the mall and look at shirts and before you make the decision, ask your spouse for permission? <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> so just. Think about that, right? As someone says that they're programmed to say they need to talk to someone because they're not convinced, yeah. okay? All right, so if they are convinced and they're just saying it because they've said it for 50 years, then we have to help them walk through the process. Um, you know, that that's not a problem. I understand. If, you're, if your son was here, what do you think he would say? That's it. If your son was here, what do you think he would say? Well, I think he'd 
probably want me to do it. Really? Why? Why, why do you think he would say that? Well, because of X, Y, and Z, right? This is, this is another version of this. Why do you, why do you feel like it would help you? Why do you think your son would like it? Okay. Um, well, he'd like it because it would give him the money. It would, he would get it right away, blah, 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 whatever they say. Okay. So if I'm hearing you correct, you think your son would like it because of X, Y, and Z. Got it. Which one do you think he would pick? Oh, I think he'd probably pick the $50 one. Yeah. Why do you think he'd pick that one? Is that the one you like the best? Okay, I, I understand that. Good. Now, let me ask you another question. So what will you do then if you go to your son this weekend and then he actually tells you he doesn't want you to put this in place? That he just says, no, mom, just save your money. I'll take care of it. What will you do then? Well, I'll probably just do it anyway, right? That's what you want. If she says, well, if he says no, I probably won't do it. Really? But is, is that what you want? Is that what you want for your son? Do you want to put him in that position where he has to come out of pocket? No. Okay, that's a tough one. So if you go to him and he says no, you're really not going to do anything to protect him? Well, I don't know, right? You're going to, they're going to be very conflicted and you can't rush this process. They're going to be very conflicted on this. Okay. So if I'm understanding you correctly, if your son was here, right, I'm going to recap again. You think he would actually like it because of this reason. And he'd pick this price because it's probably the most affordable and it would give him everything that he needs, but you really don't know what you're going to do. It sounds like if you go to him and he says no. So, hmm. Can I maybe make a suggestion? So because you're kind of unsure about what you'll do if your son says no, would it be maybe reasonable to possibly like just reduce the coverage in half right now so that if he does want to take care of it, then you've at least covered half of everything and then he only has to come out of pocket with half, right? Like just coming up with ideas off the cuff, right? Sometimes you have to do that so that you're justifying your decision-making with your customers. And then if you do go to your son and he says, mom, this is a great idea. I love that you did that. You can always just call me back and we can just get the full amount, right? This will at least make sure that we have your approval. I can email everything over to you. So you have something to look at with your son when you talk to him this weekend, right? Because without the application, I don't even have anything to send you, right? I can't even imagine having to regurgitate everything we talked about today that you've heard for the first time. That's a lot, right? How much, you know, how much time do you think you need to talk to your son? A couple of days or a couple of weeks, right? Then just push it out by a couple of weeks. So sometimes you might have to stay in that spouse kid objection for like 10 minutes and you have to take your time, right? You have to take one step at a time. You have to really let them process what we're trying to do. And if you rush it, and if you only ask one of the questions, right? And if you just go, can I make a suggestion too fast? Then it wasn't enough time for them to really process it themselves and justify that they can actually make a decision without having to talk to someone about it first. But for warning, if you did not educate them properly, right? If you didn't really understand their situation properly, if you're not on the same page, then that is just an excuse because they don't feel like you're the one that's going to get them the best results. And I can identify that when we listen to your calls. That's the hard part. Knowing when you get that objection, why did I get it? Did I get it because I failed in the beginning or did I get it because I just need to help someone get out of their own way? And that's just going to take a lot of practice, a lot of consistency, a lot of coaching, a lot of listening until you finally just mastered it right? That's why I say 30 days to learn, right? 60 days to implement, 90 days to collect. So hopefully you all have that much time.